27, June 1962. In the history of Earth, wherever there was a possibility for the consciousness to manifest, I was there. This is a fact. It's like the story of Savitri. Always there, always there, always there, in this one, that one. At certain times there were four emanations simultaneously. At the time of the Italian and the French Renaissance, and again at the time of Christ, then too, Oh, you know, I have remembered so many, many things. It would take volumes to tell it all. And then, more often than not, not always, but more often than not, what took part in this life or that life was a particular yogic formation of the vital being. In other words, something immortal. And when I came this time, as soon as I took up the yoga, they came back again from all sides. They were waiting. Some were simply waiting. Others were working. They led their own independent lives. And they all gathered together again. That's how I got those memories. One after the other, those vital beings came, a deluge. I had barely enough time to assimilate one, to see, situate, and integrate it, and another would come. They are quite independent, of course. They do their own work, but they are very centralized all the same. And there are all kinds, all kinds, anything you can imagine. Some of them have even been in men. They are not exclusively feminine. At first, I used to think they were fantasies. Before I met Sri Aurobindo, they would come and come and come to me, night after night, and sometimes during the day, a mass of things. Afterwards, I told Sri Aurobindo about it, and he explained to me that it was quite natural. And indeed, it is quite natural. With the present incarnation of the Mahashakti, as he described it in Savitri, whatever is more or less bound up with her wants to take part. That's quite natural. And it's particularly true for the vital. There has always been a preoccupation with organizing, centralizing, developing and unifying the vital forces and controlling them. So there's a considerable number of vital beings, each with its own particular ability, who have played their role in history and now return. But this one, the tall white being, is not of human origin. It was not formed in a human life. It is a being that had already incarnated and is one of those who presided over the formation of this present being, the mother. But as I said, I saw it. It was sexless, neither male nor female. And as intrepid as the vital can be, but with a calm, an absolute power. Ah, I found a very good description of it in one of Sri Aurobindo's plays, when he speaks of the goddess Athena, I think it's in Perseus, but I'm not sure. She has that kind of, it's an almighty calm, and with such authority. 
Yes, it's in Perseus. When she appears to the sea god and forces him to retreat to his own domain. There's a description there that fits this being quite well. During the whole time Sri Aurobindo was here, the four entities he speaks of, the four aspects of the mother, were always present. And I was constantly obliged to tell one or the other of them, now keep calm, now, now, calm down. They were always inclined to intervene. <laughs> 